uh, just really excited about this opportunity to uh, play a really good team in a really tough environment with the trip to New York City on the line. Obviously played really well um, at SMU, uh, broke their 19 game winning streak and it seems like we're in our best win of the season. So hopefully uh, we're peaking at the right time. Um, feel like you're back in the WCC again? Uh, yeah, that's two out of three. Let's see what we can do. It. Okay, this is this is this is the one trip. Well, there's one other trip that was kind of brutal too, but this one one this one's not a fun one either. You know, just it, kind of on that though. I mean, does it help the way you can prepare for these games at all when you play a team like first Santa Clara and now BYU? And these are teams you know. I mean, you coached against them for three years, and obviously there's some different aspects to them. But these are teams that you have faced and environments you have gone to. Yeah, uh, Santa Clara was a little easier because it was still Coach Sendek. Um, I've never coached against – I'd actually get back. We did coach postseason against Pope when he was at Utah Valley, and he's a really good coach, and uh, that was a good game in San Francisco. Um, but I haven't coached against BYU, but he's – they're a little more defensive-minded than the previous regime. They're physical, and he's got an edge like he was as a player, their toughness. Um, but it does – the environment, just coaching here, it helps because this is a – one of the tougher environments playing in the country. They're really good at home. It's a huge venue. I don't know how many they'll draw, but they'll be, I imagine they'll have a good crowd. You know, just kind of on that, you mentioned their physicality and, you know, they don't have a ton of height necessarily. No one above six, nine and only two guys, six, eight and above. Uh, but obviously they've got, they've got that physicality, you know, how do you kind of make it? So you, you get to Sean getting the kind of the physical part of that, but then you also have FA and Mill use their athleticism, use their length and their height to kind of take advantage of, of the smaller posts they have. Yeah, no, it's tricky. Like uh, sometimes inches aren't – the height isn't as important as your width. And then like Traor is wide and long. And sometimes it poses problems to even score over those guys. Uh, but we'll see. He's only a freshman. Um, but they should have – if we don't give up angles, he should have a hard time finishing over our length around the rim. You know, but if he gets an offensive tip dunk, can't stop those. Or he catches it on the roll, he'll be a problem. But uh, our length – uh, defensively should do well. And then um, we got to see how, I mean, I think Loner's a good post defender. He's strong. He's really athletic. Um, we're going to have to, it's a different, I think Santa Clara was longer and not as strong. So we had success there. And then SMU didn't have any real size. Uh, they had some guys at the bench. So this will be our bigger, bigger challenge for our strength of our team. I think. Just on to Sean. Um, he, he did come back obviously against SMU, but everything good with him after kind of getting bumped there uh, in that game. Yeah, I think he's fine. Um, he's he's uh, he's ready to go, and uh, we'll have him at practice today and get him ready for tomorrow. And just in that same regard, you know, there was that stretch, I think, in February where F.A., it seemed like maybe was dealing with some stuff um, just physically. You know, I think he only had 13 points in, thir in five games. Uh, now over those last five games, he's averaging 13 points. Do you, do you kind of feel like he's getting back to where that 100% is or as close to it as he can be uh, before going into the offseason? I think so. I think Deshaun and F.A. both, like I said, they missed about four months. And F.A. never really – he's practiced more often, more frequently. So, whether he's feeling better, he's getting better, um, you know, I thought just the way I think COVID fell up, kind of pushed everything back. We missed a lot of time, and I knew it was going to take a little while because we have new pieces. But, you know, I've been saying it, hopefully I'm right, that we've been playing better and getting better. And if we went into June, if we're on that NBA schedule, we might be really good. Uh, so – FA's dunk, uh, number one on Sports Center. I, I got to ask, where's that kind of rank among all time plays you've seen in your career? I haven't seen many bigger or better. I was, the coach of me is terrible because the fan of me wanted to jump, but the coach of me is like, I'm ready for the charge. I was ready for the name, thank goodness. And you couldn't tell. And I was just so, think of the worst case scenario. And I was like, even, as a, even if it was a charge, the official needs to come out there with a the block, but it was a good call anyway. And, um, I can't think of any better dunk that I've been witness to at really any level. Uh, how fair is it to say that the team is 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 peak, peaking right now or playing better than it has all season? And what's kind of changed in the past couple of weeks, or is it mostly health? <laughs> um, I think we, we've talked about all year about playing our best down, and, and we've been um, getting better in certain areas. I think our uh, – well, first of all, health, you hit the nail on the head. we got nine guys that were playing, and that's given us depth. This time of year, that's important. So that gives us in having the three bigs, a certain level of physicality and uh, always being big and athletic out there. 
Um, and, we, you know, we talked about being playing our best and taking care of the ball. We were under 10 turnovers against a quick team that had to pressure us late. Um, and we did really that, – that gives us a chance to be pretty good. And uh, you, you kind of talked a little bit about it, but kind of BYU preview, uh, how do you think you guys match up with them and, and any big advantage on, on paper there and kind of where do they have to excel? I think they're similar to Santa Clara in style of play, the way they play, uh, except they're – like I said, they're a little more physically stronger, not as tall. I think Santa Clara is long and rangy. So, and then you got to do a great job on Barcelo or Barcelo. I'm not sure how he says it, but he is tough. He's old. He's grizzled. He's in his last, I think he's a senior finally. Um, I'm sure he wants to go out in the best possible terms. Um, and uh, if we can do a decent job, that gives you a better chance. And the other guard, uh, is it Lucas? He's, you know, he played start off in Illinois, so they got some, they got some real, real players that, and young, young inside guys that are big. So, I think we match up well, but they're like top fifty team on the road. It's another quad one team, and it'll be a really tough game. I have to imagine you you guys are riding a you know a ton of confidence right now after the SMU game. But what's kind of the vibe among the team right now? You know, they've been pretty. Uh, pretty good about poised, and I think it starts with Mike Flowers, who's been, you know, he, he's a senior. He wants, he really wants to advance as far as he can, and he played great last game, made some big shots. And um, but they've been able to, you know, we've been on the road a while. We probably need to change a change of clothes. We need to do some laundry, but um, hopefully we're rested up and we can handle handle this uh, moving forward. I think handle this long trip and. We've been pointing towards trying to get – that would be a heck of an honor if we could get to New York. I'm going to pass you over to Jim Meehan, if, if that's all right. He's got, he's got one for you. Thanks a lot. All right. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Jim. I'm just checking on something. I know it's off topic, so uh, – but I appreciate it if I get your thoughts on it. Uh, the West hasn't won a national title since, I think, Arizona, like 25 years ago or so. Yeah. There are a lot of chances in there with Arizona and UCLA and the Zags and heck, I think three pack 12s were in the final eight a year ago, but, yep. and I know, you know, before Baylor had been a long time for the big 12 and before Michigan state or uh, the last time the big 10 won it, I believe was Michigan state. So beyond just how brutally hard it is to do any, any uh, theory on, on the West, why it hasn't broken through in so long. Well, I, I think, uh, there's not as many schools out West for, for starters. Um, and it's just, like I said, it's hard to do. I think we, the West really has, I think they have three teams with their capable, obviously in Gonzaga and Arizona and don't sleep on UCLA. Cause they made a deep, you know, they got to the final four last year and they handled a good St. Mary's team that had beaten Gonzaga. And uh, I know in St. Mary's just drilled Indiana. So I think they're, you know, they didn't play great the first round, but they kind of – they know how to win. Um, so, and I, in my bracket, it's Arizona versus UCLA. <laughs> I have the Pac-12 going 14-2. and two, But uh, – so I was pretty optimistic. Um, but uh, no no real theory to it, I think. I mean, it's just hard to do. I mean, obviously – I mean, Kentucky only has one win, right? One, one since – Yeah. And, uh, and the number of pros they've had in the last – 10 to 15 years is, is truly amazing. So it, it's, it's just not, it, you know, Carolina stuck out three, didn't they? No, that's wrong. Yeah. 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 How about it, just, yeah. I was just going to ask how, how good a shape is West coast basketball in now? It looks like it's trending in a really good direction. No, I agree with that. I think uh, people, um, you know, I think our, our league's a little underrepresented, but you know, the numbers didn't shake out. But I'm, I think we're doing pretty well postseason, and I think we'll bounce back here next year for sure. But again, we might have two of the top eight teams uh, that might that affect us. And then uh, West Coast Conference actually had a really good year um, in Mountain West at four. So there's some good coaches, good programs, and um, I've always kind of been biased since I've been coaching out there. But I do understand the East Coast bias because I was coaching at Columbia for six years. And I forgot, I forgot about these leagues. I couldn't stay up to watch them. I said, don't blame the East Coast. They just can't stay up that late. 
<laughs> Thanks, Cal. I appreciate it. All right, no problem. Hey, Steve, uh, go ahead. Steve, you there? 